Believe it or not, the Nintendo 64 is one of my favorite video game consoles. In some ways, it's arguably the most significant console for me as a retro game collector. More on that later. But in this video, let's take a look at my total N64 collection as it stands right now and celebrate this beloved console together. All right, let's take a look at some games. As of right now in 2024, I've got just shy of 150 Nintendo 64 games. One of these cartridges was actually never released at retail to become part of the official North American library. And we'll be sure to take a look at that one later on in the video. So for 100% accuracy, I've got 147 North American retail games, plus a couple of bonus carts in my collection. There were 296 games released in total for the N64 in North America, so my 147 cartridges translates to just under 50%, 49.67% to be exact, of the full set. As you can see, I keep all of my games in this big IKEA bookcase, and I slapped these end labels on the top of the cartridges many years ago to make it way easier for me to find the game I want to play at a glance. To properly kick things off, I thought we'd take a look at an assortment of some of the action and platforming games for the console, as well as the horror classic Resident Evil 2, which remarkably got ported to the N64. I remember reading about how this was something of a technological marvel at the time, given the size of the game and its demanding graphics of the day. I also remember having lots of fun playing Gex 64 and the Army Men games with my friends there at the end of the 90s and the beginning of the 2000s. While we're down here in the living room, we can open up what my wife and I call our game night cabinet to find some party games and game show themed cartridges. The games in the Mario Party series are certainly the standouts here, but I've got to give some special shout outs to these Namco and Tetris games too. Plenty of fun to be had with these carts when you've got some friends over. Now, it does not take long at all to find sports games for the N64, so we've put all my basketball games here where they belong down here on the hardwood. <laughs> it's funny to think back on now, but I actually spent quite a few hours playing the first Kobe Bryant in NBA courtside as a kid. This is not my childhood copy, but I do recall picking one up on the cheap as a youngster and playing as the Chicago Bulls for basically every game. It was not a great game by any means, but my brother and I definitely had fun with it for a while together. If you get a little too hot draining threes down on the court, why not cool down with some hockey, snowboarding, or maybe a frozen burrito? <gasps> Admittedly, I personally haven't spent much time with any of these titles beyond playing them for a few minutes to ensure they work, but I know that 1080 snowboarding and snowboard kids are well loved by their fans. Anyway, I'm getting chilly. Let's get some sunshine. Pokemon! Indeed, the Pokemon legacy was well underway in the N64 era, and while there weren't many Pokemon games released for the console, these were incredibly popular titles for the franchise. I had a blast with my friends playing Pokemon Snap when that came out, and I was blown away by Pokemon Stadium when that arrived on the scene. Many late nights of Pokemon fights, that's for sure. Speaking of fighting, here's the small handful of fighting games I've got, none of which I've spent any real time with over the years, always preferring to play fighting games on other platforms. I do also have a smattering of wrestling games which were extremely popular in this console generation. As a kid, I didn't own any of these, but I do recall playing at least a couple of them with friends who were really into wrestling back then. In keeping with our theme we've got going here of high contact, gentlemanly sporting activity, why not take a gander at my American football carts? These are yet another batch of inexpensive games for the N64 I didn't own as a lad, but I do remember playing with friends on some weekend hangouts. I did love to play the NFL Blitz games in particular, which isn't surprising given they're much more exaggerated and arcadey gameplay. First and goal! I think that's enough time spent touching grass for now, so here are the cartridges in my collection I categorized as flying. I certainly prefer its sequel on the Nintendo GameCube, of course, but I want to give a shout out to Rogue Squadron here for its gameplay, its optional enhancement by way of the N64's expansion pack, and its awesome box art I've always really liked. Those Back to the dusty earth we go to take a very brief look at the six baseball games in my collection. Not much to say about these from my perspective, except that I was glad to see Ken Griffey Jr.'s video game baseball legacy continue on from the Super Nintendo into the 64-bit generation. Alright, now we're getting into one of the N64's best game genres, racing games. It seems like developers really knew the hardware and its controller would be a fantastic fit for racing games. 
so they clearly nurtured the genre during the Nintendo 64 years. I can have fun for a while with almost any of these titles, but my personal favorites have got to be Beetle Adventure Racing and the Cruisin' Games. Before we go back inside to look at the rest of my N64 collection, here are some additional sports games that have snuck into my game room over the years. On a quick side note, I mentioned earlier that I've got a couple of bonus cartridges that I don't count towards the total North American game library, and this is one of them. I picked up this GameShark Pro some years ago at a yard sale, I think, and admittedly have not used it for much. However, I do remember trying it out with a few games to remove some of the Nintendo 64's dreaded blurriness that becomes particularly troublesome on modern high-definition televisions, using information from the My Life in Gaming guys and RetroRGB.com. If you're curious to learn more about how the N64 Game Shark can help alleviate some of this blurriness, I've included some links in this video's description you can reference. Sadly, if you were both an RPG fan and a Nintendo fan in the N64 era, there wasn't a lot of good eating during this time, with Paper Mario handily taking the gold medal podium here. Okay, okay. I know you're sick of seeing all these ancient sports games, but I promise this is the last sports category. I had to show my whopping two soccer cartridges today. Ooh, now we're talking. Here's the first person shooter batch, which includes some titles that have really stood the test of time being ported to other platforms. Here's looking at you in particular, Turok and Doom 64. As we close in on the last few categories of games in my collection, this group here is just an assortment of games that could have fit into other categories we've looked at today, but which I personally haven't spent much time with or didn't care for. <laughs> Daikatana! <coughs> so before we see the final batches of games, I thought it'd be worth taking a look at some N64 hardware. I've currently got two N64 systems, the original and most ubiquitous gray model and the jungle green fantastic one. Growing up, the console I owned and unfortunately sold away to fund my purchase of a GameCube was the Funtastic Watermelon Red system. I loved that color and kept the whole set in excellent shape. Box, paperwork, styrofoam, baggies, and all. While I'm still sad I don't have that unit anymore, I mentioned at the beginning of this video that the N64 is a special system for me as a collector, and that's because it's what got me into retro game collecting in the first place back in 2014. I had gotten the idea that I might like to get an N64 again, so I hopped on Craigslist to see if anyone was looking to offload their Nintendo 64. I almost immediately found a guy selling his standard gray console with the original cables, the metalsome expansion pack necessary for certain games, a couple of controllers, the manual, and at least some of the original box inserts, and a bag of six or seven games. I reached out, met the dude in a Sherwin-Williams parking lot, and unexpectedly found myself with the humble beginnings of what became my current Nintendo 64 collection. It's seriously crazy how fast time flies, and it's hard to believe that that was now 10 years ago. But it's been so fun and rewarding to revisit this system and get to know its game library better. One of those six or seven games from Craigslist was a complete in-box copy of Donkey Kong 64. So on a related note, here are the games I've got which were developed by Rareware. If you're an N64 fan, you likely already know that this developer is pretty widely agreed to be the top third-party dev for this console in terms of quality balanced with quantity. And of the games shown here, I've personally spent the most time with Donkey Kong 64 and Goldeneye, but all of these are exceptional experiences from Rare. <laughs> to follow up on the other bonus cartridge I mentioned at the start of this video, this is the unreleased game 40 Winks, which found its way to N64 fans back in 2019 by way of publisher Pico Interactive. This game was developed by a now defunct British developer called Eurocom back in the late 90s, and while it was successfully released for the PlayStation, the Nintendo 64 version was cancelled before its release. Pico came along in 2018, acquired the rights to this and a bunch of other intellectual properties, launched a Kickstarter and managed to put this game into a physical release, as well as a digital one on Steam. Like I said, I don't consider this part of the retail library for the N64, but it is pretty cool from a video game preservation perspective that this version of the game finally found its way into a better existence. Alright, here are the rarest games in my Nintendo 64 collection as of Spring 2024. 
My copies of Indiana Jones and International Superstar Soccer 2000 have clearly seen much better days. The game in this group I've had the longest is Harvest Moon 64, which I found in Terre Haute, Indiana back in 2014. And my rarest cartridge is Worms Armageddon, which I've had since 2017. And my most valuable N64 game right now is this copy of Castlevania Legacy of Darkness, which is complete in box and which I got back in 2016. But far more important than rarity and price, in my opinion, this final group of carts are my personal favorite games on the system. You won't see any surprises here, and there's really nothing I can say about the games themselves that N64 players won't already know. But all of these games are special to me for various reasons, and each one is at least one fond memory associated with it. By the way, I'm curious to know what your favorite Nintendo 64 game is and why you'd say it's your top pick. So drop a comment, give this video a thumbs up if you're digging it, and we can all make our case for this awesome console's standout titles. For my part, the N64 was the Nintendo platform of my preteen years there in the mid to late 90s and the first couple years of the 2000s. So seeing each of these game labels immediately makes me see in my mind the faces of childhood friends, the living rooms and basement entertainment center setups we used to play these games on, and the glow from the little red power light on the console itself. Love this thing. In any case, we've also got a variety of other retro and modern game collection videos up on the CrossChop channel, and you can click right here to check them out. Thank you for hanging out at CrossChop today, and as always, play heavy.